people in every state who are dead, who are illegals, who are in two states. You have people registered in two states. They're registered in, in New York and in New Jersey. They vote twice. That was President Donald Trump yesterday in an interview with ABC News repeating the wildly debunked claim that there was voter fraud in the presidential election that caused him to lose the popular vote. But given the severity of the charge, he announced he would call for a major investigation into alleged voter fraud during the campaign. So you've because launched an investigation. Is, we're going to launch an investigation to find out, and then the next time, and, and I will say this, of those votes cast, none of them come to me. None of them come to me. They would all be for the other side. None of them come to me. But when you look at the people that are registered, dead, illegal, and two states, and some cases maybe three states, uh, we have a lot to look into. Republicans and Democrats yesterday dismissed Trump's call for an investigation. There is no, there's no evidence of that, and I think that those who allege that <coughs> uh, have to come up with uh, some substantiation of the claim. Well, let's talk and about to this. To undermine uh, our, the integrity of our voting system is really strange. But in addition to that, on top of it, he wants to investigate something that that can clearly be proven to be false, but he resists any investigation of the Russian disruption of our election and any connection to his campaign. All we want is the truth for the American people. I frankly feel very sad about the president making this claim. I felt sorry for him. I even prayed for him. But then I prayed for the United States of America. All right, folks, let's get right to it with Nicole Austin Hillary, the director and counsel, Brennan Center for Justice. Also on our panel today, Monique Presley, legal analyst and attorney with the Presley firm, Paris Denard, Republican political commentator, Dr. Julian Malvo, president emeritus of Bennett College. Uh, so let's get right to it. So Donald Trump continues to speak this lie of this massive voter fraud. There is no evidence. He cites a Pew study or the author of the stuff from 2008, which is two elections ago, not 2016. Well, the author said, no, what you're saying, I reported, it's not true. Uh, so what do you make of this continuous lie that he wants to spread about massive voter fraud, three to five million votes cast illegally? It's preposterous, Roland. Uh, as you said, and the Brennan Center has shown this, there is really little evidence of voter fraud. What we are concerned about is that this is going to start a massive witch hunt. Uh, we know from the past election and from the past several elections that there's been an effort to institute voter suppression in states across the country. The only thing that this kind of investigation will do is continue to stir up efforts to try to suppress the vote. What Mr. Trump Trump should be doing, what he should be using the power of his Department of Justice to do is to try to make our voting systems in this country stronger, more effective, and more efficient. What we have found is any evidence of anything that even looks like voter fraud really tends to be clerical errors on the parts of elections officials across the country. There is no evidence of people going to polls and in person trying to pretend they are somebody that they are not. It is illegal. It is a crime. People can go to jail for it, and it's simply not happening. Uh, Monique, you're working with the Lawyers Committee on this issue, also the National Bar Association. Uh, and uh, when you hear this, when, when, you, when you hear this constant drum beat, I keep making the argument you can't ignore it because this is a clear attempt to impact policy. Absolutely. You cannot ignore it. It is shameful. I agree it's preposterous, but it's also dangerous. This is one of those times where we're seeing an administration do a bait and switch. Pay attention to what's going on over here so you don't pay attention to what we're trying to do. So Pelosi's right. We need to be paying attention to the Russian investigation, but we also need to be paying attention to this president because the National Bar Association has found every time they start alleging voter fraud, the next thing we find is policies that make it more difficult for citizens to vote. In this last election, almost half of our electorate chose not to vote. And we have a president saying three to five million people voted who couldn't or, would, or weren't supposed to be able to. Paris, the president said to David Mira, um, I didn't get any of those votes. Shelly, go to my iPad. This is a story from the Washington Post, October 29, 2016. Trump supporter 
charged with voting twice in Iowa. In that interview with ABC, he also said people are registered in two states. His daughter is registered in two states. Mm -hmm. His chief strategist, Steve Bannon, is registered in two states. His Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, is registered in two states. Why don't he go talk to his own people if he's concerned? Will he investigate them? I think the important thing uh, that we're seeing from President Trump is the fact that he wants to get to the bottom of it. This is a president. No, 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 I ask a question. I ask a question. And I'm answering your As, question. If, if he and, said... And, and so I think, Roland, at the end of the day, if the investigation that he launches through the Department of Justice shows that this information is going to benefit the other side, so be it. There are people that are Republicans that may fall in, 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 this, in this issue, like you've seen with, you know, alleged from his daughter or from, from no, Bannon. No, 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 it's not alleged. It's proven. It's actual fact that Bannon, Mnuchin, his daughter, Tiffany Trump, are registered in two states. Here's a Trump supporter. No, 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 this yeah. is not alleged. So here's my whole point. The president lied. He said, quote, I did, matter of fact, Shelley, play the sound bite again. This is important. He said, I didn't get any of those votes. Shelly, recue that up. So I want to play it again so folks can hear it. So you've because launched an is, investigation. We're going to launch an investigation to find out. And then the next time, and, and I will say this, of those votes cast, none of them come to me. None of them come to me. They would all be for the other side. None of them come to me. But when you look at the people that are registered, dead, illegal, and two states, and some cases maybe three states, uh, we have a lot to look into. That's a lie. He did get votes of people who tried to vote twice. In fact, also throughout the campaign, Shelly, go to my iPad. This is from Vice News. On Friday, an election judge in Madison County, Illinois, charged with two felony counts of election fraud for allegedly submitting an absentee ballot on behalf of the deceased husband. Audrey Cook, 88, told the St. Louis Post-Dispatch she received the ballots in the mail shortly after her longtime spouse passed away in September. She said he had made it clear he intended to vote for Trump. And, and that's what I was saying, Roland, that after this investigation is completed, it may show that it was benefiting, that, that some of the votes that were, were taken actually benefited the president. This is why you launch investigations to get to the truth. And the truth may not be what you want it to be, but it is fact and it is truth. And the early. 35 million? And the 35 million? Where, where's the evidence? You know, Roland. That's why we're going to have an investigation no, 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 to get no. to the Paris, bottom of it. Paris, if you cite three to five million, that has to be based on something, not just there well, it is. No, Roland, if I say I don't like you, that's not, that I may not have any no, facts no, 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 no. You said it. if I don't like you, but if you say, Roland, I don't like you because you lied up against me 10 times, I'm going to say it's the 10 times. Where's the evidence of three to five million? Where is it? Here's hold on, Dr. Julian, hold on, hold on. Where is it? That is what the investigation... No, 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 you can't, Dr. Julian, you can't allege three to five million illegal votes cast, and you have no evidence to show three to five million, and then you go, hold up, let me go find the three to five million, no, 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 which no. I cited. No, 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 Bro, it's not going to go find like... the three to five million, it's going to get to the bottom of the investigation, because to your point earlier, you said there's no evidence whatsoever Roland, of any voter fraud, and Roland... No, actually, 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 the British Center has... No, what they say it is, again, mm -hmm. and correct... I'm going to make this correction, then I'm going to go to you. You, not that there's none. We're talking about le allegation of massive, right. unbelievable, overwhelming right. voter fraud. Exactly. Go ahead. Exactly. And what we said is any evidence is de minimis. You cannot say that there are millions of voter fraud allegations out there when what we have found in our study, what Pew has found, what academics on both sides of the aisle have found is that whenever there has been an issue with voters at the polls, it has been due to clerical error. Those, some, that wasn't clerical you know, error. That but, yeah, just but, and, and even so, those are those are aberrations. And, and, and I'm prosecuting. Those are aberrations. And they're happening. But, 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 but it's happening. But you do Here's not want a happening. national investigation yes, you can. based on uh, uh, three, uh, two or three. Five you That's nuts. You, you don't do that. Julian. Here's where he got the number from. Mr. Trump is a high priest of prevarication. He got the number from Hillary's margin of votes in the popular vote. Precisely. He pulled that number from Hillary's margin. There is no such thing as three to five. I think you would concur with me that it's less than one hundredth of one percent. 
yeah. error, which means that we may be talking, what, 30,000 votes max. Let's get to max. the bottom of it. And, 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 in fact, and in fact, according to, again, these, this was an analysis done by the Washington Post. And I'm just saying, uh, I just want you to deal with it. They examined more than one billion votes cast, more than one billion. How many were so-called illegal? Uh, I believe maybe 0.4 percent, some very minuscule number. Very is, 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 that, is that massive, Paris? What I'm saying, Roland, is let's have the investigation and put the matter to rest. Because this is the... What do they put to rest? Because he, the he's lying. lying. It, the is, not, it, it is, is to rest. rest. No, no, no. To Monique's no. point, she goes, every time we hear this happening, there, this happens all the time Paris. with Republicans. If the investigation comes out and it says... Paris, this is not happening, Paris, I sat not down at the Republican National Committee with, with Rice Priebus and Sean Spicer, and they sat here and kept talking about, well, it's voter fraud. I said, and you're going to take an L on this. Every time we hear, oh, voter fraud, we see another vote. ID law passed. We see more voter suppression. We saw what happened in North Carolina. Please tell me where Donald and Trump has chastised North Carolina Republicans for what a federal court said was a laser light targeting of black voters. That is him, voter suppression. You're not going to see him chastise anybody because what he has done, what he is doing is undermining the strength of our democracy internationally. The more he says voter fraud, the more pe our democracy, which we go around talking about the strongest in the world, the more we look weak. Exactly. And so this, if this is nonsense to spend <laughs> we don't millions, if not billions of dollars the on... The country's falling Monique. apart. The country's falling apart, according to our president. Well, it is. I mean, that's what he just it said. Is. So it what is. You're oh, saying, my God. So it's like saying, Mad Max and a Thunderdome so what, out there. So what you're got, saying, have you seen the roads, what you're saying the bridges, is they're that apart. we don't... Hold but up. he wasn't talking I'm about sorry. roads and bridges. He was talking about carnage. He was talking about we'll go to Chicago. people that not is having... Carnage. having and, and the fact that those are real lives and the adapted phrase of our president is carnage and that you, as a representative of the party, are taking that on as the marching orders for what we should call real men and women who have lost their lives to gun violence in the street is unacceptable. No, I and think what we're finding, I'm not finished. What we're finding is that we have a president who is a narcissist and he is taking his own need to be big when he is small. And he is now using taxpayer funds to justify it. So since we should get to the bottom of things, then we need to get to the bottom of Russia, don't we, Paris? We should get to the bottom of Chicago, we need should to get we, to the bottom of oh, Russia. Should we get to the bottom of Russia? Absolutely. Should we get to the bottom of Absolutely. So should we then, get to the bottom the of so then with the Justice should Department we get to the Reform, what the Justice Department just did concerning Chicago is an excellent start because those are taxpayer dollars. Right. Do conservatives even that. care about taxpayer dollars anymore? Now we want to launch investigations based on the president's pipe dream of three to five million people who voted for somebody else? Then he says none of the votes went to him. Why so? Latinos and women voted for him, didn't they, Paris? And larger so, margins so, than they so did if for we're, all the so other Republicans if we're that Exactly. The so then who are the illegals that that did not vote for him. If three to five million people voted who weren't supposed to, aren't those his votes? Roland, can we it's get back to the fraud issue? issue? Go ahead. Let's get back to the fraud issue. If Mr. Trump really wants to make our democracy stronger, he can use his investigative power, the power of his Department of Justice, to actually figure out how do we make our election system stronger. Dr. Malvo just said this is about our democracy. He pledged four to five days ago to uphold the Constitution and keep our democracy strong. Strong. Making it stronger means modernizing our voting systems. It means ensuring that we have fair, free, and open elections. Revive and restore the Voting Rights Act. Cut down on these voter suppression laws to make sure that every American, whether they're blue, purple, or yellow, can vote. That would be the best way to use his bully pulpit as president and to use the power of his Department of Justice. That's what we need to be spending our time on. So I would urge Mr. Trump to get away from this witch hunt mentality of focusing on something that we know is not really a problem and to utilize his power to make our democracy stronger. That's what we need to do, whether we're talking about gun violence, the schools, use that power to better our systems, and and not to lessen doesn't them. Doesn't he get it? He won. He doesn't seem to get that he won. No, so, he, he I mean, can, can, can he not be president. gracious? Can he not be he gracious? And he basically, uh, he's doing what he said he was going to do yeah. about the wall, about other things. 
things that we all object to, but this whole... No, I don't think it, we it, all object and, 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 right. and, in fact, and in fact, let me... Uh, Shelly, pull up my iPad. This is from the New York Times. Uh, Trump's voter fraud example, a troubled tale with Bernard Longa. Of course, he's a golfer. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, this is what Trump said. Uh, that uh, he's basing this on that he heard a story quote from the very famous golfer Bernard Longer, uh, whom he described as a friend, according to three staff members who were in the room for the meeting. The witnesses described the story this way. Mr. Longer, a 59-year-old native of Bavaria, Germany, a winner of the Masters twice in more than 100 events on major professional golf tours around the world, was standing in line at a polling place near his home in Florida on election day. The president explained when an official informed Mr. Longer he would not be able to vote. Ahead of and behind Mr. Longer were voters who did not look as if they should be allowed to vote, Mr. Trump said, according to the staff members. But they were nonetheless permitted to cast provisional ballots. Look? Wait a minute, hold on. It gets better. The president threw out the names of Latin American countries mm -hmm. that the voters might have come from. My Paris. Friend. That's the basis of his argument that some folks should not have voted. They looked like, according to Bernard Longer, they looked like they shouldn't be able to vote, and Trump on, comes out and throws out only the names of Latin American countries. That's racial profiling. Now, profile. you tell me. Classic racial profiling. Explain that. That's the basis of his argument, folks vote illegally. Classic Wait, racial profiling. Haven't read the report, never heard of the report, cannot substantiate it as fact or true. But what I will say, Roland, is what I hope that this investigation does. Well, there were three does, people who were in the room. And coming from the New York Times is not something that I really think is, is they have not been fair or, or, or right or in the hold reporting on, no, no, of the no, president. No, but hold on. So but, I don't but, know but anything Bernard about Longer that. Bernard Longer confirms the story. I, congratulate. I don't, Actually, I don't, I don't and, know. And Trump said it. He got from Bernard Longer, and there were three people in the meeting who heard it? You asked me about that story, <laughs> okay. which I have never read or don't know. Okay. But what I would tell you, what I hope that is at the end of this investigation, we will be able to get to some solutions and address all the things that you that you we raised. Can do that because right that, now. we don't need the investigation. To no, do we that. do the because you need facts. That we know Paris. You need to put the Paris, facts to the, We know what happened in North Carolina. We know what happened in several other places. We know how people have been turned away from the polls. We know that, for example, when I went to North Carolina, one polling, one uh, county had eight early voting places and this time, 2016, have won. We know what happened. I'll we know about broken I'll, machines. I'll, 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 I'll say this here also. According to the uh, New York Times, the antidote the aide said was greeted with silence that Mr. Trump was prodded to change the subject by Rice Priebus, the White House Chief of Staff, and Senator John Cornyn, Republican of Texas. That's just one problem, though. Bernard Longer, a German citizen with permanent resident status in the U.S., by law, is barred from voting. So he's Quote, tried. he's a citizen of Germany, according to his daughter. He is not a friend of President Trump. I don't know why he would talk about him. That came from Bernard Longer to Donald Trump. <laughs> Nicole, we appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Kickstart your day at 7 and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin. Every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.